Welcome to a quick guided tour of the Mosolver, a motor with resolver functionality all built into the same magnetic structure. We start with a hybrid servo motor. These are high pole count motors, run closed loop. We had a sense coil with four quadrants. One and three are wound clockwise, while two and four are wound counterclockwise. This will cause the voltage produced by the sense coil to be dependent on the difference in the rate of change of flux passing through sectors one and three, first that flowing through two and four. We add a slot to the stator in order to mount the sense coils within the stator. This is cutaway section of the motor. You can see the stator windings as well as the sensor windings. The flux generated by a particular stator winding will pass through the stator, through the teeth of the stator, into the teeth of the rotor. The fractions of that flux that go through each of the quadrants of the sensor coil will be dependent upon the alignment of the rotor teeth to the stator teeth. The series of slides is a visualization of the flux paths between the stator teeth and the rotor teeth. In this case, the upper stator teeth are aligned to the upper rotor teeth. The brown represents spaces in the stator well, the black represents spaces in the rotor teeth. We've now rotated by 1.2 degrees and there's now a significant coupling to the lower rotor teeth while the coupling to the upper rotor teeth is still in majority in this particular angle. We've now flipped and the coupling to the lower rotor teeth is now greater than that to the upper rotor teeth. Finally, we've rotated equivalent of two full steps. We've gone through and the lower rotor teeth are now best aligned to the stator teeth and we have minimal coupling between the stator teeth and the upper rotor teeth. We're going to visualize the magnetics by visually unrolling them so that we can see two adjacent poles without any parallax. The gray structure in the back is meant to represent the rotor with the teeth alternating between upper and lower pieces, whereas the two black masks in there represent the gaps around the stator pieces. The holes in these represent where the teeth are located and where there's a hole in both the rotor mask and the stator mask represents where the teeth are overlapping between the rotor and stator and thus have highest amount of flux. In the sine coil, which is to the left and is red, you'll see that there's a balance between left and right, between 1 and 4 and 2 and 3. With this balance condition, when we pulse the sine winding, we'll end up with minimum output from the sine winding, and we'll end up, as we show in the figure above, a zero output. On the cosine winding, we have maximal coupling between sectors 2 and 4, first that along 1 and 3. Because the sine coil is reversed left to right compared to the cosine coil, we'll go through and see that the cosine coil is going to produce a maximum voltage to this orientation. We've now rotated slightly and you'll see that the sign is no longer balanced. In fact, there's a larger area along the 1 and 3 versus 2 and 4 direction, so produce a positive output. On the cosine, we've come closer to balance than we were before, and the output will drop from its maximum to a somewhat reduced point. We've rotated a little farther, and now you'll see that the area is representing overlap are mirror images between the sine winding and the cosine winding. 
which would cause them both to produce the same voltage and indeed that's what we go through and see from the sine cosine chart. Continue on and you'll go through and see the sine continues to increase while cosine is heading towards zero. The sine winding now has the maximum balance along the one and three as compared to the two and four sectors and produces a maximum output. The cosine winding is balanced left to right and produces zero output. We've now rotated sufficiently for the sine winding to again be balanced left to right and produce a zero output. The cosine is at a peak negative with sectors 1 and 3 at their peak versus 2 and 4. We're now back to where we started with sine at zero and cosine at a maximum. As we continuously rotate the rotor, we'll generate sine and cosine waveforms as a function of position. By looking at their phasing, we can go through and tell the direction of the motion. We get about 640 counts per electrical cycle, which with 50 electrical cycles in the high pole count servo, goes through and produces 32,000 counts per revolution. The sine and cosine are also directly usable for commutating the motor. So we end up with a motor and position feedback resolver functionality on the same structure. The same chopper drive that goes through and controls the current to the motor to position it a portion of the flux is picked up by the sense coils via the differential pattern and is amplified to produce sine and cosine when sampled at the appropriate time. In summary, the Mosolver is an integrated actuator with feedback. Its size is the same as the size of the motor with no additional volume for the feedback device. It has high resolution of 32,000 counts per revolution. It is less expensive and more robust, and the alignment is inherent to the design. It's covered under multiple U.S. patents and a pan-European patent. If you have any questions, please call us at Quicksilver Controls 626-384-4760 or visit us at www.mosolver.com.